Hi everyone, I am here today to talk to you about how to knit socks without nylon that are non superwash so they end up looking like this and not like this. Tip number one, gauge. You want to check your gauge when knitting socks without nylon. I would say the ideal gauge is 35 stitches per 10 centimetres. Any less than this and your socks will be liable to um, go into a hole or felt more easily. I would also say once you get used to using a yarn, you obviously don't have to check this every time as long as you're using the same needle size. A lot of people knit socks too loosely. This also applies to socks with nylon. I would highly recommend that you knit them at a tight gauge anyway. And basically 35 stitches, I would say per 10 centimetres is the minimum. If you can manage to fit in more stitches per 10 centimetre, all the better. Although um, I would say sometimes people have trouble knitting that tightly. Just, um, just see how it goes for you and yeah, the tighter the better. Tip <laughs> number two is sizing. You want to make sure your socks fit properly. A lot of people talk about their socks. They don't like socks being too big. They don't like this, they don't like that. So my second tip is to basically start with an, a pair of socks that's an experiment or a bit of an experiment if you're able to. I have found for me a few things about sizing. Number one is I need to knit my socks longer, approximately two centimeters longer in length than the length of my foot. This is because socks without nylon and um, felt, if you have sweaty feet at all, like most people do. And I have found that my socks shrink by approximately two centimeters. So after a few days of wearing them, um, I find that my socks fit perfectly. Another thing about felting is it actually reinforces the fabric of the sock. So if your sock felts a little bit the toe or heel, it's not the end of the world because it actually reinforces your sock for you. I read this in the old hand knitters of the deals. I'll put a link down to below, below to this book. They used to knit everything big on purpose, hosiery particularly, and then shrink it just to add um, reinforcement to um, the socks and the hosiery that they were knitting. So I have applied this technique to my socks that I knit. This leads me on to my next third, my third tip, <laughs> which is um, recipe. So I pretty much don't use a recipe, pretty much don't use a pattern to knit my socks. This is because I've come up with my own recipe. It kind of means I don't necessarily knit very fancy socks. I knit more utilitarian socks and I found a recipe that works for me. So I, my favorite is a three by one rib because it grabs onto your leg without having to have like negative ease or zero ease on a sock, which um, I just, I really like that. I have developed stitch counts for my own feet for um, both my normal yarns, my horse sock, my natural sock. And then as part of the recipe, obviously I knit the foot longer as well. Another thing you can do is do, well, you can do a normal heel flap or you can do slip stitch on both sides on your heel flap, which I don't hear too many people talking about just cause it takes like twice as long, but um, that's also a good option. Yeah, I think that's all I got to say about your recipe, but basically it's not a one size fits all you need to basically come up with your own recipe for your whatever your favorite sock yarn is and keep keep that gauge written down somewhere and then you can always refer to what needle size how many stitches um how many rows to knit or whatever way you like doing it so um basically yeah you can't really rely on a pattern because i've seen a lot of knitwear designers um just making the socks too short and then that puts pressure on the toe your toe pokes through or you forgot to cut your big toenail one day and then there's a hole in your sock so you need to knit them long enough that is my key 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 point um obviously when your foot's in this shoe it's going forwards and backwards it's not going side to side so you're not filling widthwise so you don't need to worry about adding extra stitches for that it's just lengthwise you need to worry about so my top tip is to come up with your own recipe and do it every time. <laughs> tip number four is about yarn. 
So you need to pick a good yarn for the job. In the garden world we say right plant, right place. Well it's the same for yarn. You need to pick a no nylon, non superwash sock yarn that has braids that don't like to fill and are hard wearing. You need to pick a yarn that is has a high twist so definitely don't pick a yarn that's loosely spun. Don't do it, it's not worth it. Those are the two kind of key things I would say. You can also as well double up these yarns and make a thicker sock, which in my experience has been really good with no nylon, no nylon sock yarns. So I'd really recommend doing that as well. You just have to experiment with your gauge again and try and get um, a nice tight gauge when you hold the two yarns together. You don't want anything loosely spun because it, A it will felt and B it will fuzz up really easily. I would also stay away from yarns that are too hairy. I had a discussion with um, Albina McLaughlin about this um, before and yeah I have found and she has also found that sock yarns with a lot of fuzzy fibres tend to felt and matte um, I would say I have definitely had a pair do that and it was very annoying when you put your foot into the sock because there was always like a big ball of fibre in there that you had to pull out before you could wear the socks. <laughs> my fifth tip, my fifth tip, I think I'm on tip number five, is washing and care. Um, generally I wash my socks about every third day or so. Um, I will air them out every night. I'll just hang them up and then usually the next day they feel pretty well clean. Although I do have very sweaty feet so I do wash them then on the third day. You don't want to wash too much and you don't want to wash in the washing machine or dry in the tumble dryer. Um, I would never recommend that for anything hand knit it. Although I'll probably get some aggro in the comments for that. <laughs> Um, what I do is just wash it in a bowl of water with some wool wash, squeeze it out and just hang it up to dry. I don't block them or anything fancy like that. So that is what I would have to say um, about care. So my main tips, just to recap, is knit your socks longer than you think you need. But this will be different for everyone. I don't know how much your socks are going to felt, so you need to do an experimental pair and figure that out. My second big takeaway from this is choose the right yarn. I think that's key. High twist. Finally, care for your item properly. Don't put it in the washing machine. Don't felt it all accidentally. So just be careful with your finished socks. And if you do all these things, they should um, last for a really long time. This pair I have had for a few years now and it's pilled a little bit. This is my hard sock yarn and it's filled it at the head a little bit and um, at the toe a little bit but nothing major and um, I wear these very very often in the winter so I would highly recommend. This is my natural sock. These have not been worn yet. So you'll be able to see how much longer these are than the ones that I have worn. It's probably not quite two centimetres. Oh no, it probably is. There we go. So that will felt down to the same uh, length as the brown socks. And yeah, so basically if you have any tips for other people then other than what I've said here, put them below. Um, I'd be interested to hear your experiences of knitting socks without nylon that are non superwash. Let me know how you get on. Hope this is a wee bit helpful and see you later. Bye.